What the hell, man? More slides? Uh, so again, I'm going to make this quick. This time I want to walk through a production debugging process. Once you've got a bug in production, happens to everyone, it happens to me more than it probably should. But once you have a bug in production, how do you go about actually debugging that and fixing that? Well, first off, just like development, identify that bug, figure out what's happening. Uh, maybe it's a bug report from a user. Identify when a bug is happening. Go ahead and isolate that problem. See where exactly it's happening and what exactly it is that's causing an issue. Like going back to the example we had earlier, maybe it's a button inside of a scroll view. Isolate that problem. And then what's differentiating from production to development is reproduction of said issue. Uh, sometimes bugs happen in production that aren't happening in development. You're going to have to figure out how to reproduce that bug in development on your machine where you can modify code and test that uh, before you can actually go ahead and fix it. So you're going to have to spend time reproducing that bug. And having a good tool in place to capture as much information as possible about the user, about the bug, uh, so that you can actually reproduce that issue and handle it. Because sometimes a way a user has information in their account, uh, it can cause an issue. Maybe you're not properly encoding uh, text right. Whatever the issue is, you need to go ahead and make sure you actually re you can reproduce that in an environment where you can fix that issue. Then once again, simplify the issue. Uh, if it's a button that allows for customizable text, you're not parsing or displaying that text correctly, or it's just something's happening there, or you're passing you know, null to what is expected to be a string, you want to try to simplify that issue as much as possible so that you can go ahead and fix that simple case. Once you fix a simple case, uh, it's one, it's easier to fix something that's as simple as possible. But once you fix that, then you can go ahead go into that real world environment that you've successfully reproduced in development from the production issue, fix that real world issue. Once again, you're going to want to test those changes you make. If you had to spend the time fixing the issue once, it's possible it's going to happen again. It could just be like a weak point in your application or kind of a confusing point, uh, but it's a good opportunity to go ahead, test it so you don't have to spend that time fixing the issue again. This is especially uh, prevalent where you're starting to build a team or it's code you haven't touched in a while. It's nice to have some tests in place to go ahead and check that all out uh, to make sure you don't make those same mistakes again. And then finally, once you've gone ahead and fixed that issue in your development environment, you're going to want to go ahead and ship that so users don't continue to have that issue in production. Now with React Native, we've got a few, we've got two options on what we could do here. Uh, to actually release this bug fix that we've put together. You can go down the native route of building a new application, submitting it through the App Store, all that. The other option, and this is pretty much where I only use it as bug fixes, is over-the-air updates. And that could be something if you're using Expo, that's kind of built into the platform, or something like React Native Code Push, or just Code Push or App Center, Microsoft App Center Code Push. Uh, to basically send an update over the air. So within our application for just doing a bug fix, we're not adding new native things, which means we just need to interface with the existing native libraries through our JavaScript. And what we can do is go ahead, fix our bug. Maybe it's uh, setting a default value for our button text. And then we can go ahead, rebundle that uh, JavaScript bundle. We can ship it over the air. Next time the user downloads the app, they can go ahead, install that, and they no longer are experiencing that bug. So when you're debugging an issue or dealing with a bug in production, once you walk through that process, you then have to think about how you want to actually distribute that fix to your users. And that's where I personally uh, will use an over-the-air update is to quickly and easily send that bug fix out to my users. So that's kind of the debugging process I followed when working with the inevitable production bugs that you're going to run into.